Let's talk a little bit about signs and symbols. What does it even mean? Like this is the first time someone's brought up this topic on the show and kind of embarrassed to say that signs and symbols have never crossed my mind in a very long time. So the symbol could be something more like the om or could be something more like the swastika mark which has significance which people don't understand but it has a lot to give. The question is as a seeker are you ready for it and are you going to do it? Now all the other aspects that we talked about the pyramids fantastic what was what if the pyramids were a power source what uh, because when we talk about uh, batteries a part of a battery was also discovered in egypt you woke up <laughs> the engineer in me sir so batteries in the modern day are basically i mean if i remember right it's a cathode and an anode uh, positive and negative ions on one side I, without getting too technical yes yes uh, it's not that difficult to create a battery if you dive deep a little bit into science yes. you can actually create a battery out of potatoes but what science salty water repeat the question but what science <laughs> <laughs> Podcasting with an archaeologist was one of the OG goals for me when I began this show because I began this show hearing Joe Rogan's podcast with archaeologists. I feel we've got an entire ecosystem of archaeologists in our country who are discovering deeper layers of India. But more importantly, Indian archaeologists like Dr. Ajay Prabhakar are renowned all over the world. This is a man who's gone about his business of digging understanding learning all over the world some people consider him an africanist someone who specializes in african culture and history but to understand his true mind you have to take a deep dive into one of the most special episodes of trs that we've created in recent times there's one episode every 3 months or so which stays with me post recording it and this one was that episode dr ajay prabhakar has 10 more podcasts in him this is just episode 1 For all our other episodes, make sure you follow us on Spotify. We're a Spotify exclusive, which means that every episode is available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. So, without further ado, this is Dr. Ajay Prabhakar on the Ranvi Show, talking about the history that you think you know, but trust me, you don't, because we don't know what we know. The only proof lies in archaeological evidence in the form of stone, because when asteroids hit Earth, everything is destroyed. other than stone monuments and the signs and symbols that our ancestors left for us fantastic episode enjoy it All right, we got Dr. Ajay Prabhakar in the house. Hello. <laughs> I'm so pumped. I'm so goddamn pumped. I think the world of the Indian internet is waking up to history, sir. Yes. Welcome to the Ranveer show. Thank you so much for having me here. How really. are you feeling? It's amazing. It's great. We've had this lovely conversation and I'm sure like so many things coming up now. It's going to be very interesting. <laughs> yeah. What's the life of an archaeologist like? It's so fascinating. It's one of the careers I wanted to take up when I was a kid. I uh, don't know how that kind I'll tell you how it slipped off because in the 9th and 10th the only history you were taught was about the independence movement which I'm proud of yes. I'm patriotic love my country sure. but uh, I love ancient history even more yes how do you go down that path um well with me it happened by accident or it happened by uh, course on course I would say it was something which I was doing with when I was working with United Nations and we set up this uh, center called as the Catherine Achulonu Research Center okay when we started uh, you know dabbling with excavations preservations what were you doing with the united nations in the first place i was the country program uh, coordinator there okay yes so i was managing uh, coordinated programs for the united nations so it could be into education it could we also uh, did a lot on arts so we okay. did a lot many things which uh, went into all these zones like so whether it was education whether it was capacity uh, building and development sustainable uh, development education we did a lot in these areas what what, what did you study so like well i have a doctoral degree in ai <laughs> okay so wow. uh, well what we did was uh, in all these areas my uh, my uh, entry into all these areas was to get technology into all these areas gotcha. because what happens is these are very uh, systematic uh, processes but there is this lack of people there there is this lack of 
you know oriented process there mm. so technology helps to align get in course and take it ahead like in a faster way i'm assuming that when the internet revolution of the late 90s early 2000s kicked in you were brought in to bring in technology into the un right and then somehow you found your way into archaeology and you right. become this africanist and you've right. got you've deep dived into human history absolutely like absolutely. Uh, the one sense i get from your energy is that there's a lot to unpack like you have a lot of data points in your head i honestly i'm a little stumped about where to start this conversation <laughs> uh but let, let's talk about like archaeology there must have been some event or some moment in your life maybe on some moment on the field probably maybe during some moment on the field where your heart just fell in love with like archaeology so maybe we can start there yes uh in my school days i was always a uh, i mean a lover of history but uh, nothing to take me in that direction but when i started dabbling with uh, uh, bits of excavation bits of like preservation mm. conservation now this was amazing uh, the kind of things which would come into my hand and i could you know feel uh, you know these pieces of history these these pieces of uh, sculpture or metal or you know uh, wood or stone which would be or which could be made thousands of years ago by someone who was just sitting there with so much of patience uh, with so much of technology in his head because some of these things to imagine today even to replicate it would be a process you know from, from an artistic perspective from from, a from an artistic uh, perspective from to create such things would be a difficult task even today mm. like uh, pyramids is mm. one example i mean even uh, today uh, architecture uh, you know or engineers uh, or architects would find it very difficult we have all the tools there but to get such a big uh, you know a monument in front of us i mean it's it's even today it's a feat okay simple question um you know one of the first kind of ancient history i don't even want to call it ancient history one of the first history lessons we learn in school is about the four ancient civilizations chinese indian mesopotamian egyptian yes uh, do you think that's wrong <laughs> do you do you think those are accurate or not uh, i would say uh, these are the uh, you know ones which have been talked about but there are so many other uh, you know other uh, domains or other uh, i would say family sub families or families which are lost which are even getting lost today as we talk what do you uh, mean getting lost today uh, our culture is i feel we are i mean it's getting eroded every moment uh, languages are being lost you're talking about the world culture yes mm. so when i talk about in in the discussion we'll have we'll talk about it as a world and then something specific i'll i'll you know specify there but when we talk about cultures when we talk about uh, culture is basically an amalgamation of Uh, we have uh, you know we have languages we have cooking we have stories we have so many things make up our uh, culture so every single day every single minute there are so many languages which are getting lost there are people who i'm sure even in your culture there were uh, these dishes let's talk about cooking i'm a foodie you know <laughs> so we have this uh, you know uh, dishes which could be made in stone vessels for hours together but we don't even talk about it because we have a commercial set of products uh which are being dished out today in restaurants or in houses which take i mean the older older uh, let's say delicacies used to take hours effort you know and also those spices which are getting lost just an example really yes so uh, i'm i'm sure even in your uh, i mean in 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 let's say even tribes for that matter there are delicacies which are not being made today because of the effort which is involved in it there are uh, uh, you know clothes not being stitched because it takes hours to make that dye is not made because there are things so many things required to make that dye mm. and it it talks and it is so much us really because when it comes from a particular place and there's that mix the effort you cannot replicate it with machines today yeah like what i'm understanding is you're talking about modern day city based civilization like these urban jungles that we live in are erasing aspects of our past but in saying that because human beings have been around since like about 200000 years or so yes I can't imagine the number of art forms, cooking techniques, um maybe even science that's completely lost just because of the cyclical nature of human life which also brings me to this one thing I really wanted to ask you and this is something I assumed about archaeologists when I was growing up like if you actually see a cross section of our planet the earth's crust is so thin as compared to the actual volume of the globe you know and your job is to actually just excavate the earth's crust which is like lesser than an eggshell 
inside you know which encapsulates your earth core the magma etc etc but there's still so much left to discover yes. in terms of the earth's crust yes. like there's still so much left to dig uh, i i study the work of like a lot of historians and people are discovering these new cities which are uh, kind of uh, hidden under the ocean right. uh, people are discovering yes. uh, a lot of lost aspects of even say the himalayas or something like that in right. india right uh, is is it correct in saying that there's still a lot left to discover on the planet as we know it today Yes there is so much of excavation there is so much of work going on as we talk okay. but there is so much more to know so much more to know there is so much more to know really what does that mean you know uh, we we wonder as to why and how like we talk about uh, major civilizations even back home here of course we'll talk about it i think a little later but there are many questions you know as an archaeologist or an anthropologist there are questions that we have like uh, you know if we would talk about certain monuments certain instruments certain weapons how are they really made you know okay uh, certain uh, we talk about sound you know we talked about sound which is uh, there how did these sounds uh, as we call them as mantras or how uh, like it could be even uh, call f- for prayer or if it is there are so many different things that we use our sound you know how did we modulate or how did we know that these sounds were apt why do we have you know uh, certain uh, even uh, gods all over the world today which are combinations of different uh, you know animals you know mm. human beings you know like ganesh back home or ra in egypt absolutely absolutely let's say rain egypt there are so many anubis like for them there are so many combinations in uh, greek uh, or uh, roman uh, mythology like we have so many combinations why are they always like that our world was always you know dominated by spheres rounds you know the circular objects when did we start shifting towards rectangle squares now i talk about dimensions like wow. geometry you know so today we have logic which is given so much importance very important but when did we go away from the heart which is you know emotions which is the female aspect of it when we talk about balance we talk about work life balance we talk about emotional balance we have mental balance but when will we ever talk about you know balance within ourselves as in the male and the female mm. wow. so <laughs> so these cultures like remind us that the balance has to start from within then so when we talk about these monuments these are structural edifices not just for vision or the aesthetics aspect of there's a, it there's a purpose there's a purpose there's yeah. a constant reminder i th- i think one of the recent podcasts i heard about ancient history spoke about the pyramids the stonehenge in uk yes how all these huge monuments from ancient human history yes. actually carry messages which carry itself into the future it's human messages which were supposed to withstand the test of time because over 3000 years even plastic erodes absolutely but stone rocks these things stay as they are yeah um let's get into specifics sir yeah, let's sure. talk specifically sure. about the pyramids sure you're an africanist <laughs> uh i know you've done a lot of work in nigeria have you also worked in egypt a fair amount yes you have yes. okay yes. and uh, wow this is off. back I'm so excited I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> like oh, but uh, let's unpack Egypt sir uh, yes. let's begin with the pyramids yes and let's kind of get into an essay about ancient Egypt I feel like it's one of those cultures which has been lost we spoke yes. about yes. information being lost etc etc absolutely and I love my own country I love what we stand for as a culture yes but uh, often the india that we've grown up in has this habit of being a little myopic about its world view we think that everything is yeah. india the world begins and ends with in with india that's just not humanly true that's not humanly possible mm-hmm. i feel like definitely india has been a cradle of culture spiritualism etc etc but there have been these other hot spots all over the globe absolutely native america south america sure ancient egypt absolutely where culture developed spiritualism of its own kind developed right. of course it must have even been linked to indian absolutely. Uh, culture yes so let's start talking about the pyramids like what's up <laughs> like what's happening there like let's start it like with an intro for someone who doesn't know what the pyramids are and then let's get the dr prabhakar perspective what <laughs> have you figured about it 
Yes, uh, the pyramids, uh, uh, there are so many pyramids. First of all, we, we have this, uh, again, uh, the word used was myopic, uh, view that there are only one or two pyramids, but there are so many pyramids. The sizes of them are uh, different. The ones which we know are the ones, of course, uh, the ones which we know of the three uh, beautiful pyramids, like which can be seen, which are a tribute, uh, which are... Still under study, a lot of study, uh, even with, uh, you know, projections up in the sky, we're still studying as to what is inside, really. Are they tombs for uh, uh, a prince or a king? Or were they uh, to study, you know, uh, the stars? Were they monuments to, to say, I have done it? Were, were they like to pass on to an afterlife? Were they the release of spirits, you know? Were they to invoke the gods, were they an answer or were they a display of mathematical, you know, uh, I would say grandiose that I know my math very well. Were they to say like, you know, it's a treasure trove, you know, were they to say it was, was it a sacrificial, you know, a bed wherein like people were sacrificed and, you know, it taken there. So all these questions are there in so many minds and it would take us many such podcasts to answer all of this. But I would say uh, many of it could be true. Uh, but the beauty of it is how it is holding up together. We have, uh, you know, uh, we have monuments today, uh, which we make, uh, which don't hold up to 10, 12, 15 years. These have been there for thousands and I don't want to get into the actual numbers because again, it would clash with the numbers which are being put up. So again, the idea is that uh, these have been there for thousands of years. Now, thousands of years, it's not easy to have what kind of... Now, many things have fallen off or have gone off the limestone on top. Many of them have gone off, but you cannot deny the fact that it is still right there in front of us. Has it been explored completely? Well, many parts of it uh, have been explored. Many parts of it are being explored with uh, newer technology, uh, with bots going inside uh, with lights. Because some of those parts, uh, some of it was also made in a way that there are no exit points. You can just go in, you cannot get out. Like a maze? Like a maze. Wow. Yes. So there are many, uh, basically for tomb raiders uh, or tomb uh, robbers, if I could uh, call it that, uh, so uh, many of this would were made like traps so that if you go in through many of the doors don't lead anywhere. In many of the pyramids that we talk about, it could be just a maze as you talked about, or it could also be like, uh, you know, it leads to something, but it leads to, you know, another thing, which could be the end of the person who went in. You mean like booby traps? Booby traps, yes. With, uh, with like, like in Indiana Jones, when he's trying to get into a tomb. Yes. How things attack him. Yes. Or it could be just psychology. Like we have even uh, ancient Chinese, uh, you know, tombs wherein like there's this uh, sign and symbol which would say, you know, you enter in at your own risk or as you enter in, you'll be, you know, cursed. So many years of history would lash on you or, you know, really slash you or your face will be. <laughs> so, so many different things, uh, which is, which I said, which is kind of psychological because as you enter in, you're already scared, you know, what the dark, uh, you know, is in front of you. And with that, this could really heighten, you know, any kind of fear, anxiety that you have and you could make mistakes which you wouldn't generally make. Have you gone inside? Yes. You've gone inside a yes. yes. What's the vibe of it? Uh, maybe it's also our mind. It also gives you an air of ancient. It gives you an air of uh, superiority in the sense you you, you feel uh, royal. This is what I felt. Uh, royalty, you know, the 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 vibe of power, you know, uh, the vibe of uh, history, of course, uh, learning, knowledge. There is so much. There is so much hitting you at the same time because you you. There are so many for the person who has an you who has an open mind. I mean, there are so many things which would come. On. It's like a burst of flavors, you know, which would come on to your, you know, being. So like an uh, overload of data. Overload of data. Are there other hieroglyphs on the walls? Yes, all over. Uh, not all over, uh, of course. With certain sections, there are. Uh, they have messages. Uh, they also have questions for the people who come in and visit. 
how could people be so organized uh, you know when we talk about ancients we have this image of cavemen jumping in from one you know and going on to another cave you know killing doing something else <laughs> you know but uh, this is culture really at its best uh, even color combinations uh, start with that like black and gold you know when you make things uh, limestone to cap beauty you know uh, there is even in any craft you know we start with basics and as we go on we build in beauty you know i want to make my art better so i keep adding beauty to it finesse mm. that's what you call it so when you are building a monument of that size i mean to have a capping uh, and to make it so beautiful uh, triangle is one of the most sturdiest i'm sure you know about it sturdiest and the stablest uh, shapes mm. it's also it is also i, I don't know how many how many of our uh, people who are listening and viewers uh know that it is also a symbol of the feminine the sacred feminine so uh, did they mean that they made it for the mother goddess which was uh, you know later uh, converted into a very macho masculine kind of thing because uh, these are the two symbols again when we talk about monuments because the ancients had that thing when we talk about signs and symbols you know a sign is basically which has a flash and it goes off but a symbol is something which you concentrate on and you you derive value out of it well, we have to unpack signs and symbols <laughs> a la- little later on sure, on the show sure. right now i just want to stick to pyramids sure, because sure. you're giving me so many places to hit you with tangential <laughs> questions so sure uh, i have some personal curiosity when it comes to the sure, pyramids sure i mean this is a slightly controversial question to you is it true and i mean I'd, i'd probably just like to know your opinion and i know you're a very science backed researcher yes uh you only share information that you know is backed uh, yes. by scientific proof i'll be careful yes yes <laughs> but i'm still i'm also gauging your opinion here about ancient egypt the timeline we are given in schools is about 2000 3000 years ago yes is it true that the egyptians of that point counted themselves to be a modern civilization as compared to an even more ancient egyptian civilization that existed 50000 60000 years ago and i ask you this because of um this whole thing about cataclysmic events the ice ages uh people underestimate how often the earth is hit by asteroids like we assume that one asteroid hit the earth when dinosaurs existed killed off all the dinosaurs and since then it's been relatively okay but that's not true Absolutely. asteroids hit the earth very often right much more often than we understand because our life spans are what less than like 80 years right. which is nothing when you compare to the 2 lakh years of human history sure like even if you come back home they say that the rigveda was about 8000 10000 years old etc etc right uh i feel like if human civilization evolved in africa 2 lakh years ago if homo sapiens uh, kind of appeared there first there's no way that nothing happened for 197000 years like some stuff has to have happened i'd like to just know your opinion on this egyptian timeline um um i believe there have been many mother cultures before this culture so again when we talk about cultures uh, it is very important Uh, to understand and this is what i believe that they have they have been not one many mother cultures which were there uh, before uh, just want to breeze i know like uh, you know we will not touch on the indian part of it today but uh, the prakrit uh, we talk about sanskrit from where the sanskriti language you know it's sanskriti you know we talk about sanskriti which is like tradition you know and we also have the sanskrit language but what about prakrit what is prakrit prakrit is another language which was again uh, uh, debated uh, talked about uh, you know people uh, you know have there have been different talks this is the first time in my life i'm hearing this word by the way that's yes. how buried it's gotten so uh, prakrit is another language and prakrit is uh, what also comes from prakriti mm. you know hum prakriti kaise bolte hain aise prakrit you know so we have been having languages or cultures which were in tune with nature and then we start going away from nature so prakrit prakriti even though we talked about uh, signs and symbols you know again brushing it there when we talk about languages all our languages are getting more rectangular squarish we had this mother i, I go back to mother cultures and mother uh, languages because uh, even uh, one of the older symbol or one of the oldest symbols which we have uh, or uh, wonderful archaeologists uh, wonderful uh, researchers who have uh, you know discovered 
is the spiral mm. you know uh, the spiral is again a a goddess symbol it's a feminine symbol so when we talk about this symbol and when we have nature which is also given uh, as a mother i mean it's mother uh, nature you know we call so again when we talk about such things the mother part was there very strong before uh, uh, you know logic or the f- the male part comes in and takes over is it a way of saying that society could have been matriarchal for the ancient it was ma- matriarchal it was matriarchal yes i actually got to give an intro patriarchal societies are where uh, men are sort of the alphas in families the alphas in society is the business owners uh, matriarchal is the opposite where women head businesses head families have a much stronger say in society other politicians of that particular place etc etc uh, and you actually see elements of that in kerala in uh, the northeast of india still any anyway, now go on so uh, we also have uh, like the spiral we have again so so uh, i believe there was uh, there were mothers of uh, culture and mother cultures there were mothers of culture and mother cultures which we strongly see in amazon uh, or we strongly see in many parts of africa even before like we took over i'm not saying one is better than the other i mean we are not getting into that now but uh, the most important thing is that is also important so when we talk about egypt Uh, we have many symbols there the pyramid the triangle being uh, one of the most important because uh, we have isis we have so many other goddesses which are given so much more importance uh, you know mm. so the mother of ra for that matter like you know so ra itself is a very powerful figure the sun the circle circle which is again uh, you know feminine so if society was matriarchal and even i would like to believe that <laughs> it was um what was the role of men back then um both had now when we see uh, even uh, societies or we want to study societies then it was always a balance it was never like if it is matriarchal it is like everything women and we have to <laughs> bow down or everything is uh, no it means uh, more attuned to nature more attuned to a very heart emotions feelings the heart over the mind kind of the God. thing so it doesn't have to mean that uh, you know you uh, a simple a simple uh, example would be like uh, let's say if you are hunting a thing could be to go brutally hunt and you know uh, you know decimate uh, the animal yes that could be one way of looking at it or you could have many tribes even do it today uh, uh, like they pray to the animal they say i'm really sorry that i have to do this but i have to do this really even when uh, the the animal is down on the ground the person goes back uh, you know whispers uh, things into the animal different uh, tribes have different ways of interpret so this is a very uh, natural from the heart way of doing things you could do the same thing two different ways i'm not saying that the brutal way is the 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 patriarchal way of doing it but i'm saying more in tune with nature that's what i in, in mean. tune with mother nature yes mm so as much as uh, even today's societal else if you could see this is the element which is missing really you know the the drawing back to the matriarchal uh, part of it the empathy is missing absolutely mm-hmm. so whenever we do a thing when we meet a person you know, the from the heart the emotions the feelings the mental aligning towards the female part of in us you mm-hmm. know of us mm-hmm. really and that's really missing the emotion feeling of the emotion part it i mean it says nowhere that i am going to a different domain now but no, it doesn't no. it doesn't mean that you go away from your emotions you identify you approve you be part of it yeah. you know but at the same time if you have to grieve grieve mm. you know there's nowhere written that you should be a brave man you cannot grieve you cannot cry that's not the part of it so when we say about things like this so it's also a reminder that we cannot go away from nature what you're doing today is decimation of nature the word you used decimation of uh, nature in every abuse absolute abuse whether it's plastics whether it's water is whether it is land anywhere and every way if we could abuse them here the be the biggest abusers as a race speaking about the human race the human tribe race. um do you think the ancient human being also developed technologies that were just lost because of the ice age 
or that was just lost because of cataclysmic events like asteroids because we have vimanas here i am dead sure that you've had discoveries in egypt where you kind of had a moment where you're like hold on i think this is a little too technologically advanced for that time yes again plastic deteriorates over 3000 years and for our civilization that is one of the symbols of technological and scientific advancement but what if those folks had developed their own kind of plastic which was biodegradable what if they were ahead of us we often have this arrogant viewpoint of ourselves as a 2022 civilization it's 2022 this is the most scientifically advanced form of human beings how do you know that time has been around for 2 lakh years and we only have documented history for about what 5000 6000 years maybe 10000 so you don't even know what went on in the 1 lakh 90000 years yes uh and you have to kind of take a step back and view this whole human history story from a macro uh standpoint and ask yourself did atlantis exist did uh dwarka exist did dwarka exist you know was the earth's geography and topography completely different, different yes which it was yes um anyway so what what do you have to say about this like in terms of technological advancement because you use the pyramids as an example i'm sure your work has brought you to other aspects of technological advancement yes uh, now all the other aspects that we talked about the pyramids fantastic what was what if the pyramids were a power source what a battery okay you know a huge battery it's not me it's about uh, you know it's i call upon every researcher who is there to don't believe me don't go by what i say but go research you know go look at things which could prove or disprove the thoughts that you have in your mind you know and that's very important really uh, because when we talk about uh, batteries a part of a battery was also discovered in egypt scientifically it is there okay yes uh, i i invite every viewer or listener to go into depths about uh, what this battery was because again it take up a lot of you know the show no no <laughs> like you woken up the engineer in me sir so batteries in the modern day are basically i mean if i remember right it's a cathode and an anode uh, positive and negative ions on one side I, without getting too technical yes yes uh, it's not that difficult to create a battery if you dive deep a little bit into science yes. you can actually create a battery out of potatoes but what science salty water repeat the question but what science <laughs> 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 okay go on that's Let's... that's the most important thing because uh, even when we talk about uh, the most advanced sciences today mm. we are just mimicking nature robots wow. artificial intelligence when we talk about it's our intelligence that is being uh, mimicked the neuron networks uh, or ml or anything that we talked about it's just mimicking of us w- but what was it what was the device it was used like uh, you know to power uh, certain uh, other devices what did it look like it is a it's a funnel like uh, i mean it's it's it looks like a funnel it's it's very crude of course it's fun of course it has become crude over time and it has a mouth you know uh, that's the reason why i said like to explain probably like we could have superimpositions of uh, those images on yeah, as we yeah, talk yeah, for yes. sure so like so these are the things which were there uh, then feels like a battery looks like a battery but is it a battery i mean that's something which is something which we have to delve deep so do, if you do, it, did it have the same cathode anode uh, it could have had with time things have gone really i mean things which were in place you know have been mis- missing in place but w- what's the archaeological perspective of assuming that it's a battery because it functions the same way a battery would as in it it functioned when they found it Uh, no it, it i mean of course it has uh, degraded if you could call it that but if it were restored uh, to a version like which was workable so it's something which can be made useful sure yeah so there are many tools even like uh, you know there are cert- certain tools you would wonder how how would they make it like what, what let's so i say i got to dial back a little bit I'm to sorry. the battery mm-hmm. again this is the engineer and me speaking because when you're talking about a battery you're basically talking about electricity right and we talk about edison edison discovering electricity quite yes. recently yes. in the human story yes. and here you're saying that possibly 2000 3000 years back they had electricity yes um i mean the obvious usage of electricity is light possibility okay mm. what do what do you assume that it uh, it could be for various as we know as electricity is just a start it could be power as we know it today or it could be power any other way 
you know i am i'm now going on to i'm i'm really trying to balance myself so that i don't cross the science no no line. sure sure um, but it could be to power up uh, certain other things as we know today uh, you know uh, our ancestors were basically uh, interested or aligned towards if it is like really the mother culture or uh, mother cultures they were aligned towards devices which were more uh, in line with nature so i if i was a scientist then i would have devices which would look natural but it would give you the functionality of what we have in plastic or metal today wow so and, and if it, it was aligned with nature it would have degraded over time absolutely it's a possibility it's which, all these are possibilities yeah which, which is why we've lost so much technology absolutely it it is a it is a very big possibility i'm not saying yes i'm not saying no <laughs> let me be very you know specific on that but it's a possibility why can't we be you know open to the fact that there there could have been a possibility of such technologies really existing i mean if i were to make certain things which i have made in the last 2000 3000 years in in alignment with nature i would make it very differently i would make it something which was by degradable like how we are looking at plastic bags and you know different other things why because we have that consciousness that we can't abuse but if it is coming from a culture which has that as a religion that you can't do this so it would have or it would have technologies which will be aligned or intertwined with that philosophy so it is a great so electricity is something which we know of or which is a kind of power it's the same like uh, as i was telling you like whether we talked let's say if you talked about 25 years ago about bluetooth or let's say the wireless i mean you would be scoffed at and so what what are you talking about like a file going from one place to another without any wires <laughs> you you need to be joking but it is a possibility today you know it is research which is you know or learning which has brought that into the visible world if you could call it that so why could uh, is it not a possibility that nature aligned technologies nature uh, technologies which were in line with nature could have existed and would probably would have seen dust yeah i mean one parallel way of looking at it is maybe the human beings of then also went on the same trajectory that we went on developed things that actually harm nature understood that oh wait this is harming nature and Absolutely. then developed more and, and then uh, developed more biodegradable uh, alternatives right. um i refuse to believe that scientific advancement has only happened in the last 200 Absolutely. years 1 lakh 90000 years is too long a time right. for human history but the real question is where was all this technology lost i mean okay i'd, I'd probably rephrase that in saying that where was all this knowledge lost uh, because it, they would have had instruction manuals stored it somewhere could it have been cataclysmic events uh now this is wonderful yeah because i would like to and, and i am not saying anything yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's a question again in in this in this uh, episode what we will or uh, what i'll do rather is raise questions sure. because so that we can start thinking because sure. questions force you to think really sure and this is the same thing which should apply to everything that we see today whether it is herbs spices so there is the dogon of mali uh, in mali there is the dogon tribe which talk about uh, sirius sirius is a star again okay so uh, there is there are two brothers so now they do a dance i will not go into too much of details there because we are trying to highlight something which you asked there is a detail uh, there is a detailed dance there is a a uh, ritual which they perform wherein they do the exact uh, you know going around of the star uh there are two stars again so one is a heavier star so they call it the name there is also specifically it means the the heaviest brother or the heavier brother you know so uh we have that which is a dance they also know like how and, and it is a tribe which is cut off from i mean they have nothing it's a very ancient uh, ritual that they have now this dance is performed for certain uh, you know rituals uh, there, are, there are there are certain occasions uh, traditional occasions which it is performed the most interesting thing about this is that this star cannot be seen by the naked eye so how did they know it's up there absolutely so could there be clues in what we do as rituals today could there be clues in uh, you know the things that we do like maybe we do a aarti or maybe we go to a particular temple temples are also called vimanas i'll just not do <laughs> that <laughs> so again like when we do certain uh, like uh, you know things is there a hidden message there which is out there i mean 
to decipher to decode to de evolve and evolve again or did aliens come and tell us about these stars <laughs> Now these are all open questions that's a possibility as well. Let's talk about the <laughs> most important part of this particular episode ancient aliens sir. <laughs> 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 What's your opinion on ancient aliens and we're not doing this from a <laughs> history channel perspective you know the show ancient aliens which just said everything is because of aliens we're not going down that perspective uh, what I will ask you though is uh, about signs and symbols related to alien life extraterrestrials ufos this is there across world civilization there's a reason that ancient aliens is even a concept spoken about but i feel if anyone has to have an opinion about ancient aliens it should be a historian like yourself what's up <laughs> <laughs> ah there's something like which uh, you know uh, many people even on flights like people ask me like what do you think about it it's a very interesting and intriguing question at the same time uh alien now when we have the when we talk about aliens we have this you know a blong you know huge headed uh, gray man gray, gray man, man. <laughs> yes, kind of people who pop up in our mind but a uh, alien could be very similar to you and me i could be an alien for that matter. do you think aliens could have had sex with monkeys and made human beings uh, again a question which is a possibility again like it, there are so many variations like you know it it is a possibility uh, when we talk about aliens what are we really talking about is it a, a race of uh, people who are really far ahead in their sciences i mean how different could they be from us like really you know uh, even us if we are like alien to some other place how different are we from them like it could be many of these things could be defined by the planet that they come from really mm. so this could be the define but what if aliens are you know this is again just taking it ahead from where you left it aliens are within us like really even today you know yeah. so uh, no i mean expand that thought a little bit <laughs> i think i think what you mean is the comets that have hit earth from outer space have carried microbes yes. which found their way onto the earth and i believe there's a theory about fungi in general fun absolutely. like absolutely. fungus mushrooms yes. yes they say came from asteroids absolutely so so it doesn't have to be just like walking talking human beings you mm. know it could be those microorganisms we have been even water is alien yeah it's, that's true yes so it's it's i mean you're talking about the ancient history of the earth as a planet yes. which got hit by an ast which got hit by a comet yes and water was created like you know it was never like part of us because there was droplets of water yes. on that asteroid yes. before like you know all these uh, even the smallest organisms to come forth and the come forth in the way like because of water you mm. know so how they thrived is another question so this is so when we talk about uh, life itself like so all these organisms microorganisms so even what we look for in other planets we have been sending so many space missions like outside now what we are looking for or seeking for and we get them from there to here now we have been uh, growing um, you know different vegetables on the soil which we have got from uh, moon you know so what if you know even on uh, planets that we assume there was no water what if there was water like the desert uh, like you know uh, which we have had sahara for that matter what if there was it was a ocean because we have had instances wherein you could see shells in the middle of the sahara yes. desert mm. so it could be possible that where there was water there's no water now planets mm. what if it was a landing base wherein like you know it these are all possibilities you know uh, wherein big uh, huge aliens come in and they boat for some time and they see earth oh this is happening like a tv channel and they go off <laughs> like let's go help these monkeys here <laughs> it, it's it's a possibility not even like uh, really getting them and uh, uh, getting them down to say okay these are uh, maybe they see uh, themselves in us mm. you know maybe it's a race which wants to help Mm. maybe it's a race which feels like these organism compassion you know yeah what what do the earth ancient cultures actually say about this in their signs and symbols because they have been symbols of like flying objects that are found vimanas for that matter or even when you come back closer home we talk about devlok and uh, other beings there is a lot of astrophysics hidden within just indian scriptures um you know i'd i'd like to know what 
say ancient Egypt thought of aliens or even South American cultures thought of aliens or African cultures, you're an Africanist. There have been these mentions of beings. Even I believe when you talk about Ra and uh, I, uh, what's the female goddess's name? Isis. Isis. Uh, there are some kind of alien elements attached to uh, Ra and Isis. So I'd actually like to know your perspective while you're studying uh, archaeology because I'm sure this question has popped up in your head as well. Um, there have been symbols which are outworldly, to say the least. I would start with a, one of my favorite, like the spiral, uh, which could also be the symbol that we have in uh, our dharma, Sanatan dharma as we call it, like the Om. Mm. Uh, the, the three spirals are kind of each going into another. Mm. And it's one of the oldest, uh, one of the oldest symbols. But how how can you think about something like that, which talks about the whole world as a cycle, and not just one cycle, but interconnected cycles? You know. So how do you explain that? So uh, it it's it's very difficult when you know when such symbols find place. As I said, it's not a sign; it's a symbol. Uh, a parking. Uh, if you could, I mean, if you could talk about symbols, it's something to make you think, mm. which is something to give you direction. So for, for such symbols to have like the trident, there are so many, fire itself, like in so many different forms. Sun, if it was for a crude uh, person, like the sun going, I mean, it would be another thing, like, but it being so much, given so much importance, you know, the cent it is the center of so many things, in fact. The moon, you know. There are so many things, in fact, which... And why this fascination with uh, things outside in the sky? When you're walking and in the jungle, let's say, assuming the, <laughs> the, the everyday schedule of a caveman, let's say, you go out, you hunt, come back, make a score, you know, eat, maybe, you know, do whatever. But why this fascination with direction? Why this fascination with math? These are not, I mean, forgive me, I'm I'm calling it higher sciences. But these are not like something which uh, unorganized or disorganized uh, mind would feed into. Mm. These are things when you have reached a particular finesse, as we call it. Like, you know, beauty is not something which, you know, is just laid on the table. It comes with time. It comes with constant, you know, preparation, you know, research, getting in, then the finesse comes in. So simil similarly, like when we talk about uh, all these uh, older symbols, whether it is, uh, you know, uh, the different gods that we have created, like uh, whether it is in the Greek civilization, the Roman civilization, the Egyptian, why them? Were they really, I mean, it's as though they were real. They are real. You know? why, why are there so many parallels? Why are there so many parallels? Like Zeus. Yes, yes, thor. yes, 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 yes. Whether it's uh, you know, uh, I was I was just tempted, but we'll we'll probably take that for another thing. But there are so many gods which which are so many sim. I mean, there are so many similarities in so many cultures. So uh, how are they so similar? I mean, they are years or uh, even geographically uh, apart. And why the sudden splurge of certain symbols in certain places all together at the same time around the sp same span of time? These are questions which intrigue again. So as I said, like uh, fertility symbols, uh, whether it's the mother symbols, the fertility symbols, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, the masculine, the patriarchal symbols, the, whether it's a phallus or whether it is, you know, other symbols which have uh, found, uh, you know, uh, fascination with stars, fascination with, uh, you know, uh, the the universal uh, flow of it, you know, mm. uh, fascination with thoughts, fascination with nature. These are all things which are there like part of the different, you know, I mean, you can't have a mind which is not ready for such things, which is like in the hum of things, observe and make such such things in such detail. Mm. So this is, uh, these are like fertility symbols is uh, something which... Uh, what, what about what about ancient stories, sir? Like, um, you know, all these stories we hear about from Indian culture, forget forget Indian culture for a minute. Even when you actually get into Egyptian culture, they have so many stories yes. where they talk about these beings arriving on like ships, etc. What do you make of all that? 
um it could be uh, the ancients were uh, brilliant in a way like they found uh, they never put all the eggs in one basket so whenever they have or had a message they put it into different media so drawings could be one on documentation like papyrus you know or some other media like paper later or that could be one before that stones you know etching on the stones another very powerful thing that they also used was uh, oral mm songs mm traditional because every person like you know has to do a particular uh, event or a certain series of things before he or she becomes something maybe an adulthood ceremony mm. a birth ceremony a initiation ceremony mm. now they all have some message from the past now what is that message and what does that remind us or what does what is it supposed to guide us or to say to us is something which we'll have to figure out so when we say uh, whether it's the bible or the you know whether it's the egyptian stories again whether it's uh, uh, bhagavatam or gita so they all have stories what if they are more deep what if they have a story within a story mm. what if they have important messages to deliver unpack as you say the word again and again unpack and give to you on a plate which mm. is just not the same you know everyday things that we do mm. you know what if there is a symbolism there is a meaning to it mm. what if it's a warning don't fall over the cliff mm. be mindful yeah mm. it's a message from the past yeah because human beings have gone uh, many have gone you past. know in, you know there are many signs i remember like you know many have gone over please be careful <laughs> mm. you know those kind of messages like it means that you drive slow you watch out uh, priority should be different let's talk a little bit about signs and symbols and crop circles you know <laughs> <laughs> but signs and symbols uh what does it even mean like this is the first time someone's brought up this topic on the show and kind of embarrassed to say that signs and symbols have never crossed my mind in a very long time like the last time it crossed my mind was when i was watching ancient aliens on the history channel why does it fascinate you so much is it because it carries messages it carries deep messages and what's the difference i think you touched upon it earlier on this episode you said that symbols are something you absorb yeah signs are something like this could be a sign a flash what does that mean like from an archaeological perspective uh it means that there's a message there's a there's a message that uh, the ancients are trying to tell you no but is it is it like symbols etched on walls it could be the language that they are trying to say you know uh, you couldn't have books on stone walls you know so as much as even uh, whether it's hymns or whether it's mantras you don't get oh i am a boy i am 16 years old i am this is not what you write what uh, you know what you would write is basically something which you want the people of beyond to know mm. what is legacy what is history what is power what is you remembering you what mm. is you mm. so if it is a if it is you like let's say if someone is famous it means that the person is known but for how much time what if a person wanted to be famous beyond time like tutankhamun maybe or you know ramses mm. or anyone the high priest for that matter what if the high priest wanted to send you a message that look we face this be careful mm. you know what did so there are different signs which are available but you know when you say signs what do you practically mean in, in like the real world what would count as a sign what would count as a symbol i'm assuming that a symbol is etched on like the walls of a pyramid for example yes what would be an example of a sign a sign could be um, you know something which leads which could be very fra- which could be very fractional in the sense like it could be something as you enter in you know and uh, a puff of uh, smoke comes out what that's a part of it could be sending a message yeah it could be sending a message Uh, now this puff of smoke could be uh, when they had sealed it they put in something there which was supposed to repel people you know it could be just a fragrance and you are repelled which has stayed alive for thousands yes, of years yes because it's sealed when you talk about the woolly mammoth the only reasons why they stay 
is because they were sealed they were cut away from time time has been like you know severed if you could call it that you know and on your archaeological adventures yes. you've come across signs we've had we've had signs wherein like which would say that you know do not venture ahead where was this uh well we've had this in one of the uh, you know uh, we we did it is in africa in nigeria to be very specific cameroon uh, nigeria border we have we also had something which is called as the mountain of spirits in cameroon you know so when we were doing uh, sites there we have had like certain certain things which would say you know we shouldn't be doing it like there are stories to to give you an idea there are stories about the mountain of spirits that would count as a sign yes because it's it's kind it's supposed of supposed to yes carried its way into human Absolutely. culture beyond it's time it's just like a red light gotcha yeah it's not something which will dwell over like you don't dwell on the traffic light like uh, a parking symbol would be something oh you cannot park here it doesn't say you cannot park here it says no parking like you know, just p slash you know it's it's like the equivalent of the indian way of saying uh, on ekadashi you should fast that could be a sign which carried could, which is carried its way into human right so the symbol could be something more like the om or mm. could be something more like the swastika mark mm. which has significance which people don't understand but it has a lot to give mm the question is as a seeker are you ready for it and are you going to do it sign could be on your face you know like you have to do it like your red yellow so it could be a, a oral story which is uh, like uh, which is supposed to keep you at bay maybe it could maybe be the bhagavad gita is a sign would it count i would say it will be more than a symbol in fact there are so okay. many mixed there are so many messages there so Watch. many messages so it would be like each words i mean has been carefully etched and put in place so it has multiple messages even in the placement of things you know mm. whether it i mean the way you say it uh, the words you used to say it there are so many things which are there so i would say like it is more than a simple so yeah maybe maybe signs and symbols are basically encapsulated information that serve different purposes yeah that serve different purposes that the past wanted the future to know the past people wanted their yes. descendants to know right um in terms of symbols i'm sure there's like a wide variety with different messages would you say that the overarching theme of most symbols that you find from ancient cultures are related to sustainability being one with nature because that's kind of a gist of what i've got from this conversation absolutely is it different things uh, most or more of it is around human life it also talks about uh, flora and fauna okay like uh, birds just an example birds there are certain birds which are the phoenix going there now yeah sure phoenix is a, a bird which is associated with death and rebirth it's like coming back mm. you know you a person dies and comes back with renewed vigor to do things which would have never been possible with the old mm. life mm. so it's something which is a source of inspiration mm. so when you see a ototem like that you remember that this is a this is a story or this is a spirit which our ancients are saying through this uh, you know symbol that you cannot give up mm. you have to keep going like it's a motivational video which they packed into time yes <laughs> true mm. because they used to never have like uh, a person who would say this what if your uh, now let's just to take this a uh, step ahead what if your podcast were to be like you know made into a a, a one image video and you had to deliver it like a time capsule like you know you, you leave it mm. and later people come in and say oh wow these thoughts you know were so vibrant and are so very essential even today like yeah it's it's probably why this element of shiva is present across so many cultures yes. there must have been some great human being way back maybe 3 lakh years ago absolutely who did some great stuff who went beyond human life yeah. that's why you find elements of it from in the indus valley in egypt in africa absolutely More Absolutely. more on that in the next episode, though. Yes, there's something very interesting, yeah, which I would love to share, mm. but probably we'll yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hold back it. for this one. <laughs> we'll start the next episode with it because this one's more from a world history kind of perspective. Right. Like we've got an international audience now, right? Um, loving this whole signs and symbols angle, you've like kind of opened up a new topic for me to dive into. And I'm not educated enough to ask you the right questions about oh, it. Oh, you've done great, in fact, and. there's also another thing which before we wrap up also the part of you know the kinds of signs and symbols you asked about that and that lingers i'm just holding myself back because it is a whole new book also sayings 
sayings sayings like you know muhavre rome, muhavre like rome was not built in a day mm. like you know it needs uh, it needs more than a village to raise a child mm. one uh, tree is not a forest so these are you know packed things which are just given you bang and you think tweets of the past <laughs> that's amazing like we have to address this whole psychedelic angle uh that's one aspect of it we'll get to that eventually right. but you brought up the phoenix <laughs> sir this is another hot topic yes i've been reading a lot about are you ready for this yes please dragons oh so dragons are present across every single culture and i actually got into uh, a few podcasts about dragons what i figured is what were dragons they were reptiles which could fly there used to be a dinosaur called the pterodactyl which was exactly that it was a reptile which could fly right they also say that modern day birds have evolved from dinosaurs yes uh, because if you study the trajectory of megafauna which yes. is the study of ancient animals they were huge before and over time those huge animals died out possibly become more efficient yeah they become more efficient by being smaller yes uh, so when you're smaller you need less of food you can move fast you can absolutely. save yourself more easily absolutely they also uh, i believe it's not a theory i believe it's proven now that now they've come to realize that the ancient t-rex which is the villain in jurassic park actually had feathers it looks very much it's, oh, it's, a, it's not proven i uh, we've not conclusive i'm i'm not sure we have conclusive evidence in okay. that i'm okay. not sure like i've seen these images of like a t-rex with feathers etc but the, i know that the raptor definitely has like a raptor right. ha, raptor which was there if you remember that scene where like it is pushing the child mm. and it goes back and they are in a fridge if i'm not wrong like the, and yeah. the raptor is on the uh, the kitchen yeah, sh- yeah, yeah, shelf yeah. and it st- tries to move around and see so that definitely had uh, feathers or you know that mm. definitely had it's a it also has a, a cousin uh, but yeah more or less they had or they had more elements than what is shown in Jurassic Park mm. yes oh, wow. t-rex i'm not sure really gotcha yeah but there were dinosaurs with feathers yes uh now maybe they evolved and survived as birds right possibly when those asteroids hit only the pterodactyls and the flying dinosaurs could have survived and Absolutely. Then maybe could that have, could have happened yeah it's just could a possibility yes i believe the purpose of feathers is to capture like kind of make your body more airy and like help you with flight if i'm not mistaken multiple things possibly again one is uh, camouflage camouflage okay second is also probably uh, the wings also give you uh, you know as you rightly said if it's depending on the season or where it is from it could be a woolen blanket according you know mm. across you mm. uh, third is also aviation the mm. design is absolutely like helpful mm. when you fly hold the air yes gotcha So here's what I have found fascinating about this whole angle. Mm. If you eat chicken, you know you'll you'll chew say a leg piece. I'm vegetarian now, but I've eaten <laughs> a lot of chicken and partridge and all that in my life. You'll chew the leg piece. Finally, you reach the bone, which is also chewable, mm. because the bones of birds are hollow, and hollow bones deteriorate a lot over time. So even if there have been dragons in the past it's very likely that for the sake of flight they had hollow bones because i think that's what they figured about pterodactyls which were the flying dinosaurs that they all had hollow bones which are in very bad condition now of course they died out they went extinct yes but i think most birds have hollow bones including ostriches and emus yes they're not meant to survive over the course of time why do so many cultures talk about dragons all over the world could they have actually been there in different forms these flying reptiles because we also know and zoologists acknowledges that 99% of all animals that the earth has ever known have now gone extinct what we know about all the animals that exist around with us are only 1% of all the animals that have ever existed the lions the tigers bears cheetahs emus ostriches you name it piranhas it's a very small fraction of what has existed in the past i don't think it's a coincidence that so many cultures all over the world from european to african to chinese to the americas there has to have been some truth about dragons uh, again our folklores you know whether it's from china whether it's from uh, british you know the british folklores that we have whether even in africa even indian uh, you know we would see some temples having you know a dragon like mm. you know representation 
uh, again it's open to interpretation you know but more or less they have a similar kind of uh, build they emit or you know breathe out fire and you know so this fire could be anything it could be like you know just warm breath mm. it could be like you know the exhaust mm. you know hair, hot air going out it could be so many things but even looking at it i'm i'm trying to look at it scientifically uh, uh it's it is again a possibility like but you uh, to support such a big body you would also need huge uh, wingspan like as in huge feathers everything would be huge like it, so it would appear to be a very huge uh, animal there are uh, even today like there are birds which are huge and when we look at it like we are terrified so for imagine a human being who's like 1000 1500 years back looks like a i mean looks at a bird like that that big uh, of course imagination is also you know it plays and you 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 try to magnify what's in your mind so giving it a that fiery monstrous or even it could be a very soft bird doing its chores you know <laughs> it could be that the most important thing is uh, it's also associated with the the people who are past it's also associated with the people even uh, dragons like uh, there are different kinds of dragons also that's also another thing there is vari- there are varieties of uh, dragons so that's also very interesting because it gives you uh, It, it is not just one species you know so or species like of dragons so what i'm trying to draw at is it's a it's a possibility that it could be a, a giant bunch of uh, birds uh, wisdom is also another thing which is now uh, we talked about uh, sim- symbols and you know signs uh, the tortoise you know all these are uh, elements like the dragon you know uh, dragon is also associated with wisdom mm. you know ancient wisdom because it the life span now for a person or for a a folklore or for a tradition or for a culture to have that as the centerpiece and to associate it with wisdom or knowledge or deep depth you know it there, there needs to be some element to it you know it couldn't be or it cannot be or maybe it's it's more than fiction i feel mm. so there could be a possibility that you know this also brings us to again a very important juncture did the ancients know how to fuse beings together what <laughs> yes i mean what stops i mean uh, there are scientists there are researchers who are fusing you know elements of uh, like you could borrow the glowing of the frog mm. uh, to you know borrow, borrow the glowing of the firefly to the frog the Because skin of the frog yeah any any organism on this planet is made up of that same unicellular organism which is an animal cell and the animal cell contains a nucleus which contains a dna strand so yes. you can pull out a piece of the genetics of mix and match yes yeah mix and match so you're saying that they knew genetic engineering i don't know but is it a possibility because we have like so many instances we discussed this earlier where in like the head of another animal it could be purely symbolic mm. when i want to say oh i want the wisdom of the elephant mm. to to you know uh, to the to the richness of uh, you know the different tools to also being a defender and an offender when it comes to need you know mm. it could be symbolic purely symbolic or it could be like a totem to inspire a group of people to say look get up our job here is not done we need to do more are there are there a lot of hidden spots all over the planet which contain treasures even today yes they do yes they do so this is also like something which uh, we've just scraped uh, the the top so what are you saying is there's a lot of hidden treasure out there yes be it treasure also means it a treasure is also different for different people treasure in terms of knowledge uh, tre- like to learn that's also treasure a treasure trove could also be like material wealth i'm talking about material wealth <laughs> because that's what the audience is interested in <laughs> we're interested in the knowledge aspect of it yes. but are there are there places on this yes. globe which yes. contain like hordes of gold like billions of dollars of gold there's a like possibility that. there's a possibility of uh, you know places which have gone underground which are you know still being scraped there are many sites which come up during construction road work you know many things come up like that 
even in india there are so many places like wow. uh, dinosaur eggs which came out of uh, the south of india mm. um, so i mean we never knew like we had some history with dinosaurs here so mm. we've had some history there so things keep propping up uh, even idols which keep coming out here and there again like when we talking about signs and symbols are any of them maps for treasure like treasure maps it could also be have you come across any like this i wouldn't know like at least the 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 ones which i see it's a lot about uh, what they have done or what they were doing or what is their history or what is their voice but a treasure map maybe we have not looked at it from that perspective what do you think was the perspective of the ancients to hold treasure and keep it like for example even all these pharaohs tombs uh, i believe that tutankhamun Tamun. tomb is the most mainstream <laughs> that's where they found uh, a lot of gold and artifacts yes. which were worth a lot of money right. what happened to all that gold and artifacts it's still with It'll the government like, yeah of course uh, the egyptian government um, uh, zawid hawas right his name so he is, i mean he has been categorically like uh, he's been spearheading the whole uh, movement and you know preserving them of course we have had our own uh, follies of the egyptian uh, different things have happened over the course of time but uh, most important is that uh, they have had found, they they have a house now where they can be you know kept St- stored oh. yes they have been documented uh, so how they, much money is that house worth <laughs> uh, collectively it's, it's, billions of dollars yes i mean why go so far even our temples here like uh, we had one in kerala which are like loaded you know which has so much of wealth material wealth when we talk about it so much of gold which i mean if you have to calculate that's something the like, gold is lying inside the temple yes even today yes and there's, pa- a, there's a case which is going on i mean uh, i'm sure like uh, you know to open the third uh, there are different rooms the third room is uh, i'm not sure whether it's opened or it's yet to be opened so i mean gotcha. where that one is so the government and the the people who have been uh, you know protecting or overseeing let me see mm. let me not use the word protecting overseeing the uh, the temple and the temple activities like so the thing still is we're still looking at how we can do it the correct way because even there it said that the third uh, door is ne- is never to be opened mm. hmm. <laughs> so, a sign <laughs> a sign it could be a sign like so what i'm also trying to say is material wealth uh, yes you asked about the holding like how they believed that they had power like Gold. the kings the kings had material wealth as in wealth they had power over a whole you know whole generation of people and more what they were looking at is something beyond something the afterlife the afterlife something beyond which will take them and they can have the same kind of status uh, you know the status quo <laughs> the status like in the afterlife so something which would aid them there which would have the same kind of same taste there you know mm. and which would also prove to the gods that they are worthy is i mean speaking about chemistry a little bit isn't gold and silver i believe two of the metals that can't be eroded because of oxygen it Aurum, has yes. some sorry or yeah uh, gold yeah yes uh, it is that also the reason why like noble metals you know yeah, uh, that's that's yeah that's also the reason why like uh, they are given prime or supreme uh, yeah. importance and, and i'm uh, sure cultures, yeah. like someone studied metallurgy way back and figured that oh these are valuable metals and they look great they're shiny probably arrived yes. on the earth on a comet uh probably not from this world yes. therefore they have so much value but who knows about the more mystical aspects right. of gold why are they around these spiritual places why is it in a temple why is it in a pyramid absolutely these are wonderful questions as well why so much around that shiny metal why doesn't the egyptian government just sell off that gold and make a lot of money it's more about history it's more about i mean wealth bread butter like you know human being you know it's the cycle of human beings you know legacy again uh, yes first you you know as a child you're trying to understand as you're born like you know and i am sure you know about it but just for so that we share it as a child you even when you show the child the child in the mirror the child won't identify the the Itself. person in the mirror mm-hmm. yeah but as a child grows the child starts identifying with that form then the next step is as a child grows again is to identify with the society what is my place in the society mm. then you know as the cycle goes on the child becomes a 
a man or a woman and the the person starts accumulating then the term of fragility comes in how do i hold on whether it's a whether it's a a jacket or a purse louis vuitton purse <laughs> i'm not promoting it. <laughs> but anything which is of value how would you hold on to it how can i have replicas how can i have too many backups like how can i hold on to it for life mm. whether it's even a baby mm. you know the fragility element comes in mm. wherein like you are so worried about how not to lose so that's the same kind of uh, thought process that a king or a pharaoh are they active treasure hunting missions there are today. there are even today. lots yes because uh, heads of governments or whether it is governments many places many people have hoarded i won't take names but there are active uh, you know people who are in this uh, domain who are kind of just offloading or just trying to get off the treasures from there and reach it to its rightful places what like as in what do you mean reach it to so that you, they want to make money of the treasure or they want to probably preserve the ancient uh, treasure they want to put it back in the pyramids no not really now what i mean to say is there have been people who have been buying with power it could be okay. rulers it could like be billionaires dictators. it could be rulers it could be dictators it could be <laughs> i'm being very careful when i so they have been accumulating the the problem is they they hoard and they keep it somewhere then that is exploited it's taken away it's pillaged mm. so what happens in all of this is it might be a stone for you but it might be a very important stone for someone else so this the value of such is more than billions of dollars so there are bodies which you know go to such places maybe after the passing away of such a person or to negotiate with the family of such people to get it back to where it really belongs so there's a museum whole underground treasure community that's what i'm understanding uh, well you could call it any name you know? I, i think we all need our trips in life you know <laughs> and when you have that much money and you're done buying cars and private jets you're like oh i want some piece of human history <laughs> yes it's basically that right yes, absolutely uh, i mean and i look look all around mm. what do human beings really do like after a point of time you have the best of everything mm. everything that you thought of the next is our history is that mm. buying history mm. past but are there like teams of treasure hunters which actually have maps or you know etc etc where they're trying to find things at the bottom oh, of the ocean they or... might be like unofficially many such groups okay uh, uh, speculations uh, rife like you know okay Ma- many things possible like there are also like as i said official uh, uh, you know government bodies which are doing like the thing that we discussed before but we also have people like that who who have got maybe a, a map from their grandfather really yes it's a possibility it's it i mean that's something which is open okay but to find it is another thing altogether ships which have gone underground mm, carrying a lot of gold coins absolutely these are i mean real i mean people are on excavations like this mm. so whether they exist they don't exist that's a different story to tell and are they protected by dragons and monsters no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> it's a possibility <laughs> All right so we're at the end of this episode one last question to kind of just encapsulate this entire episode the question was going to be about psychedelics but i feel we're going to club that with our south american special episode that we'll do at a later point let's talk about cataclysmic events uh we haven't touched upon it really on this episode like we we've, we've just kind of covered the brushed. yeah brushed upon it uh let's do a deep dive into it a little bit uh is it an area of history and archaeology that fascinates you uh is it an area of history that more people should get to know about because when i'm thinking of history as a subject it's great to study what happened in the last 100 years but that's literally a microsecond on the earth's timeline why aren't we spoken to more about meteor showers why aren't we spoken to more about earthquakes you know tidal waves uh these kind of cataclysmic events noah's ark manu uh gilgamesh mm-hmm. gilgamesh, uh, gilgamesh like all all these big cataclysmic events that cultures speak about when you're talking about ancient cultures passing on messages cataclysm is one of the big messages constantly passed on that listen 
be aware of nature's fury don't right. be a bad person right. nature will fight back uh, plagues etc etc right what do you make of all this sir what do you make of the apocalypse or the repeated apocalypse that you the human race has constantly seen so i believe like it has always been there uh, the cycle again the, uh, the spiral i get it back the mm. cycle has always been there so it's like someone who's uh, making a movie you know who who says okay you played your part it's time to go the dinosaur is gone you know uh human you know semi humans come in okay your your part's done time to go you know come enter human beings so uh, you know now how much we live is also up to us because we are also the catalyst in that cataclysmic <laughs> event we? yes because we contribute with the way we are abusing it's also a message to the future yeah so whether a glorious period existed before we won't be able to say and this will be the same like maybe maybe 1000 5000 whenever we are done you know someone would sit probably in a podcast you know like this and would say did they have did they even know what is a podcast so it's a possibility that it doesn't need to come from outside we could be the authors our, of our own destinies of our own you know going demise. into the huh? yes. of our own demise yes. we we are we are fantastic at that in fact we are, we are doing a great job in fact now so one thing is there like uh, so such events whether it's a volcanic we, we could see we can't go or do away with nature's fury or it's not really in fury it's just adjustments i would call it like you know just adjustments mm. you know you're moving mountains like you're just piling on things here so i just move a muscle and get it in its rightful place what are you polluting let me just you know so it's just nature saying stop it please like you know you don't get it stop it you know so what we need to do is first of all take note of the the message which she's trying to give us and also focus on the bigger picture of what happened like if we can do something in that area like asteroids probably elements coming from we are doing so much research on elements or planets outside what are we doing about our shield mm, to protect the earth absolutely why are we not thinking about a uh, element which could repel at least some of these why we why are we not talking about technologies like that mm. we talk about levitation we talk about you know so many other technologies you know but why are we not talking about you know studying these elements which are so close to us and having at least a barrier a wall we don't have a wall today yeah. and also keep in mind that our ancestors have constantly given us messages about comets a- and how absolutely. it's not a it absolutely. may not be a positive sign You're right so uh, it, it doesn't need to be vol- uh, a volcanic uh, eruption or a gas wave from volcanoes or a volcanic shower it doesn't need to be a uh, you know any anything from me what are we doing about such things you know so from the end we should really think about really uh, scientific not political bodies scientific bodies which really like think about such things and do something about talk conferences high tea is okay mm. but i i think we need to go beyond that and do something about such things mm. and this is the need of the r because one a multi pronged approach really if you are asking me about the message like what we can a multi pronged approach wherein like at least we sh- we stop the abuse abuse of nature natural resources everything nature in fact we align ourselves to her uh, goals we align ourselves to her rules and you mm. know recommendations mm. we have that in mind we start with that apart from that we have a study of what can be our wall our first level or first layer of defense mm. which is also. very possible technologically speaking like which uh, is which is if we can build a sun i, I wouldn't like to name a country <laughs> uh, but we, which can supply sources of energy why yeah. can't we do this i highly recommend that the listeners check out randall carlson's episodes with joe rogan he's again science back research back guy he's I think his field of interest when it comes to history is ancient human history and cataclysmic events and he knows about it like no other human being that I've come across at least and he's done a bunch of episodes with Joe Rogan it's okay. incredible to listen to them he says that technologically speaking we're about 10 years away from creating a technology that can even go on asteroids and mine elements because asteroids also contain a lot of minerals that yes. can be mined yes. and some of them are huge some of them are as wide as like 100 kilometers yes. which is massive absolutely imagine a 100 kilometer asteroid hitting the earth people underestimate what that can do to the human race if it could wipe out dinosaurs right. which are so tough so durable we, what are we yeah and we also had a very priceless uh, uh, asteroid full of uh, uh, you know priceless platinum gold mm. we just passed 
Mm. So apart from other things, so I am saying utilize this for our own level of defense, layer of defense. I would say. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, we'll be one of those civilizations Dinosaurs that just ended. And yeah. And all our uh, remains, including internet wires, including plastic, everything is going to go away. Yes. The only thing that we'll be left with are the pyramids and the Sphinx. And somewhere in the year five thousand five hundred, someone will be saying, "What do you think the pyramids mean?" <laughs> What do you, what do you think this thing means? <laughs> true, true. That's a great note. That's a great note. Yes. Any last messages for the viewers, sir? Ah, <laughs> lot of messages. I would say, like, uh, uh, you know, going with with what we discussed today, uh, signs and symbols. It's high time we wake up. It's morning already. I mean, it's rather post noon already. Uh, it's high time we stop abusing uh, uh, nature. We stop uh, doing things which are not in favor of, of us. we don't understand i mean i mean the the kind of things which we do really it's not really good for us so we stop abusing or we'll have very soon like we'll have some things which you won't like on the table you know mm. so that that apart uh, you know we we also uh, this is one thing which i keep uh, emphasizing and highlighting we also do more of research you know we we study more you know that's something which we are going away from mm. we we love being served uh, on the table and we eat that we're becoming end consumers but there's need if if our and be, being an indian and being a indian who's so proud i would encourage each one of us to take up research in smaller element maybe it is cooking maybe it is like uh, you know how to make a uh, thing better jugad is good great mm-hmm. but we also need to go beyond jugad mm-hmm. you know how to make things better like yeah. uh, take the lead it it works a different part of your brain absolutely mm-hmm. absolutely which which actually molds the way you see the world as well absolutely so so beautifully said really mm. so it, it's it we we need to be creators because essentially that's what human beings are mm. at our core like we are all creators and we are so beautiful if you create i mean some of the most beautiful things that we have created I mean everything. I mean, look at this set. You know, <laughs> look at look at us. Like very very beautiful in our you know in our existence. So we need to create more things which which on the basis of what has been said by the ancients. You need to build on it and take it from there. Really, then just leave it. Mm. You know, a uh, a uh, a uh, glass which as you're driving. You know, a uh, a glass which shows you the back. If it is removed, well, you wouldn't know. with whom or what you will go and hit you know yeah. so we need to have that <laughs> it's an intense thought <laughs> thank god dr prabhakar i'm going to say something which i mean in all uh, genuineness this was one of the best podcasts of my life oh thank and, you so uh, much thank you so much i think the indian internet has just started to discover your life's work thank you so much so just thank you for being on the show yeah. next two episodes are also going to be epic i've already thought of the third one as well <laughs> we can do africa we can do india we can do south america so surely thank you so much sir. this was fun thank you so much again thank you all for being part of this wonderful journey i thank hope you, you enjoyed <laughs> thank you so we'll be back soon that was the super heavy super in depth episode with dr prabhakar as i said earlier he's got 10 more podcasts in him so if you're consuming this on youtube comment down below tell us what you loved about this particular episode tell us what more you'd like to hear from him and of course if you have more suggestions when it comes to archaeologists historians people who are rewriting the things that were taught in our textbooks while we were growing up the people who are changing our culture we want recommendations all the time history is one of my favorite themes for this podcast the renvi show will be back Until then, follow us on Spotify. Every episode is available on Spotify 48 hours before it's available anywhere else in the world. This is the history special, and history episodes will only grow when you share them with your friends and family. Share it as much as possible on WhatsApp. Ranveer and the entire team at the Ranveer Show will be back soon. Thank you.